it's really humbling to see something kind of come to fruition. Not empowering. You don't walk around, you know. No, that's not my personality. It's humbling. It's humbling. It's, uh, it's one of those things we preach in our program, entitled to nothing, grateful for everything. Entitled to nothing, grateful for everything. That's right. That's great. That's fantastic. So you, you walk in and you see all these things you built or helped build or had the, a very fundamental part in building, and well, you're humbled by it. 100%. And I, I think I'm mostly I'm humbled by is that the fact that I get a chance to do that is, is really a great opportunity. Hi, we're here with Coach Chris Amer of Sarah Lawrence College. Coach, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So you were talking about earlier, we're just going to jump into it because we're here at the All Academic Basketball Super Bowl in Seal Beach, California, 2023 in July. You were out earlier uh, working out with some kids, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, we did some stations this morning when they first got here. And you said for an hour or so? Yeah, it's about 50 minutes. Okay. They were, and they get pretty tired during this process? Yeah, so it's day two and, uh, you know, it's early morning and they've been playing, you know, over the weekend, probably some AAU events and now they're coming in for stations. may not be the most uh, enjoyable part of the week, yeah. but it's actually really important for a coach to see that. You were talking about your voice being raspy because of that. Yes, my voice is a little raspy because I was talking over, you know, about 35 guys. <laughs> <laughs> quality. Demi Moore are the dulcet tones of a George Clooney right now, so it's good. It's perfect for what we're looking for. <laughs> But you, uh, you said day two, it might not be the most exciting thing you're doing, but it's really important. Why is it important? Well, I think the most important thing is for a college coach is that you're going to be seeing this during the season two. So a college seeing player. Seeing this being what? Being seeing what? this, uh, hey, it's now day two. They've been probably been playing for four or five straight days. Yep. Um, they're a little tired. They're yep. probably, their bodies are sore. We know that. Um, now it's the mental state. You know, are they going to be able to push through? Are they going to be able to compete and build? Do you have a good – um, eye for being able to see when someone um, is really tired versus when they're faking it? I think we try to. I mean, this is my 10th year as a head coach, my 15th year of being in college basketball. So I feel like I, I'm starting to get that. But if, of course, people do fake it pretty well sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I do think it's uh, it's one of those things where you get a chance to see them for, you know, we had 50 minutes with them. So I can tell over that amount of time typically. Yeah. So you're, you're from where in the world? So I grew up in Pennsylvania, but um, Sarah Lawrence College is now located right outside of New York City in yep. Bronxville, New York. Yeah. So uh, Western Pennsylvania, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Um, confirm or deny you're a Steelers fan? Well, you know what? My, my I'm a Steelers fan, but my most of my friends grew up as Eagle fans, so I was always kind of the abrasive one. <laughs> <laughs> neither per, neither group liked you or both group liked you? Um, neither group liked yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's from Pittsburgh, so you know you know that um, even being the, the spawn of a Western Pennsylvanian uh, you were spoon-fed the Steelers from a very young age. It's almost state law you have to like the Steelers. It's the right? Steelers and the Penn State Nittany Lions. That, that's through. it. That's that, it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Did you ever uh, want to coach anyplace else? Like, why Sarah Lawrence? Out of all the places you could have gone, what makes Sarah Lawrence your home? Well, I'll tell you what. I was at Kenyon College um, out in Ohio, which is another great high academic school. That was before, so that's right the first before, five years? Yeah, right before Sarah Lawrence. Yep. And uh, when I had the opportunity to come to Sarah Lawrence, I really kind of grabbed onto it because it was a program that – had never been a varsity program. They had been club. Yep. Um, they were not NSA Division Three at the time, but they're going to start the process to become NSA Division Three. Was that a, a th that's a big undertaking. That's could potentially a very daunting and, um, you know, uh, high potential for all kinds of growing pains or failures. A hundred percent. It's a very humbling experience. I knew it was going to be a challenge. Yep. Uh, I, I like challenges. That's part of one of the things that I like to keep my mind active. Even from when you were little in Even school? Even from when I was little, I've always been challenged. I like that. Yeah. Um, I'm a first gen myself. I was, you know, I went to a high academic school. So I feel like I've always kind of enjoyed challenges. What were, you, what were your academic preferences or what were you like predisposed to do? Math, science? Yes. Yeah, so I was an economics undergrad. I actually had my MBA. You're so. the third coach I've interviewed today that's an economics undergrad. Well, that's interesting. I don't know if there's is a predisposition for it. Do you think there, might, some be a, there might be some type of correlation with it? Absolutely. A lot okay. of theory, a lot of, uh, you know, bigger picture practice of, of everything kind of, you know, all the intangibles go together. Sure. That makes sense. And you are dealing with the economics of a game, time, resources, management of those 100%. things. 100%. And I think the MBA correlates as well. You Explain. Know, understanding how to handle an organization. There's a lot of change that happens. And uh, as you know, I, I, just think about your experiences in, in business or whatever it may be. People are always resistant to change. So yeah. I think as a coach, you're going to have people who are always resistant. Maybe it's playing time. Maybe it's just a little bit of adversity. Yeah. You have to overcome that and understand ways to, to kind of tackle that. So to that point, the the resistance to change, you're taking a sport from club to a, a legitimate D3 program. 100%. Was there a lot of resistance? There was some support? Was there a lift? Was there headwind? There was a lot of uh, institutional support, 
okay. there was some institutional resistance and, from, and from the academics or from what? it was more so from the academics and maybe some of the older alums who uh, just didn't quite get it because they had a club experience when they were there. Yeah. Um, at Sarah Lawrence had always had athletics, mm -hmm. but they did not have it in a intercollegiate, more like NCAA type of focus. They wanted to keep it that way. They wanted to keep it that way. What was the reasoning for? Just because, hey, it's it's amateur, we should be club. It's what they knew. Okay, it's what they, yep. how much of uh, your time coaching people or your time interacting with alumni, whoever, is about changing their mind? I think my first couple of years was very much like that. Mm -hmm. As we were going through that provisional process, um, one, maybe even recruiting, I mean, I was coming out here quite a bit from my time at Kenyon, so I had some connections out in the West Coast. Yeah. So that's kind of why I hit pretty early on. We're in Seal Beach, California, just to remind Yes, me. absolutely. Um, and then I think the same thing for me was, hey, I, I got to have a consistent approach of what I'm trying to do. And the big thing for us was I got to make sure that everyone knows that sees me, sees me in a Sarah Lawrence gear, yep. understands that, hey, we are, we're going to compete. We're going to start recruiting for a NCAA competitive Division three men's basketball team. So you, you, in a situation like that, you have, there's no, there's nothing preceding you. So there's a lot of, as the tech people say, white space to create, but, and that's, that's a blessing. That's a, a wonderful opportunity, but it's also a challenge because there's nothing preceding you. There's no foundation. There's no history to tap into. There's no, there's no institutional knowledge other than what you bring outside. How do you, how hard was that building a program from nothing? I mean, I know there's club, yeah. obviously, but from nothing to, to what it is now. It was a challenge, and it still is a challenge in some respect. You had, I'd say the first four or five recruiting classes, I brought in guys that wanted to help create a foundation. Well, that's my question. So are you, are you managing a different skill set, muscle set for yourself now versus when you were first building it? Because it's a different thing, right? I absolutely am. All right. And I think we're at this point, at this stage of where we are, is it's it's more about winning and and still building a culture, and, but that culture has already kind of been established. So the guys we have coming in now, we're looking, we're you know they're better basketball players, yeah. tr truthfully, the better talent, hmm. as well as they are great, still great academic students. It's still hard to get into Sarah Lawrence, obviously, yeah. but we're we're committed to winning. When you were first building your program, were you working with the admissions department? Uh, were, were they antagonistic? Were, is it, were they not even part of your equation? Like, how did that all work? So the admissions associate director was at Kenyon when I was at Kenyon. Oh, so that, that was the connection I had when I even got the job. So he was all about trying to help us out and trying to get the athletics rolling. That was a connection? That was a connection. That's phenomenal and very uh, atypical, yeah? Yes, very much so. Wow. So when you were bringing people in, what were you bringing them in to do? You, you were building culture. Were you telling them we're going to build a culture here? Were you trying to find those kind of guys? So my first couple of years goal was to be one of the best defensive teams in the league. Yeah. And that was kind of why defense first, because I think it's easier to recruit guys that, you know, are going to work really hard on defense. I think it's harder to get some of those guys early on that maybe be able to have the offense and the defense together. So we were going to be a hard team to play against. And I thought defense was going to be the most important thing. Um, obviously, we got lucky, and we did get some very good basketball players on yeah. the offensive end. Yeah. But defensive was going to be our our main focus. When did you realize you were lucky with the offense too? Because uh, when we had our first thousand point score, um, he was six seven. He could shoot a three. He ended up going to play overseas for a year, so like he had a different type of game that I would try to recruit now. Yeah. Did you? So how did you? How did you get him? Did he just happen in? Did you? Did you recruit him through high school? What was I, I recruited him when I was at Kenyon, and then I got the job at Sarah Lawrence, and I continued the, the conversations and um, actually worked at this event uh, at a different location before I came to Seal Beach. And he was there, met his dad, actually settled a deal in an Arby's <laughs> in San Francisco where he's from. Did you walk out and say, we have the meats and we have the <laughs> six seven three-point shooter and swing player? It, it was absolutely amazing. So I watched his game, and the dad who – was the former president of the WAC conference. So okay. very well known in the sports world. Uh, said, hey, let's go out and grab some food and let's get a chance to know each other a little bit more. And, and you guys chose Arby's? He chose Arby's and we, I went with it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go where he's coming. But it worked. And we sat there for almost an no hour No aspersions to Arby's. Who is our corporate sponsor? Arby's, we love you. We love the soft cheese-like substance you put on the top of your roast beef sandwich as well. Go ahead. 100%. 100%. 100%. But, uh, so we sat in Arby's for about an hour and a half, talked, got a chance to know him. He got a chance to know me. They knew the school was great academically, but they wanted to really see how I was going to help build the program. So when you're talking to a parent, what are you telling them about why they should have their son, if, if the, of course they fit into your program system, why the, you, they should have their son come play for you? I think the biggest thing is going to be based on trust. Um, they're going to be putting a lot of trust in me to help mentor them, help guide them. 
Uh, I think it very little has to do with basketball with most parents anymore. I think a lot of it is, hey, if someone's coming from, the, from California to New York, to New York City area, you have to be able to trust the person you're going to be putting them up with. Are they looking for some kind of outcomes beyond basketball? Or are they looking for points? Or are they looking for minutes on the, on the court? Are they looking for the relationship that Sarah Lawrence, let's say, can give their son after basketball? I think they're looking for a relationship that Sarah Lawrence can give their son more so than anything else. So using basketball as, as a mechanism, as a vehicle to a better life? 100%. Okay. When you talk to them, are you able to tell them that? Is it not in a transaction way, but is that something that you say Sarah Lawrence offers explicitly? Yeah, so we, we definitely talk about the, uh, you know, the ability to go to your graduate school, law school, medical school, yeah. or go right into the workforce, you know, immediately after graduating. When people come from California, do they know a lot about Sarah Lawrence? Is there brand value? So it? believe it or not, we have about 1,600 students on campus, and our largest student representation is California. <laughs> about one third of our entire student body is from California. That's Sarah Lawrence. That's Sarah Lawrence. That's counterintuitive, but okay. Now, <laughs> now we know. Now we know. So when you talk to a player, are you telling them they need to have um, the basics? They need to be able to dribble, pass, shoot, and run good defense? Are you telling them they need to be able to fit in your system, create points off a dribble by themselves? Be I, in, in, yeah, go ahead. I, I definitely try to talk about what we our, our main focuses are. And I'd say for basketball-wise, um, that's secondary. The primary thing for me is academics and character. Uh, that's really what you put first. That's what we say first. Um, basketball is definitely important, but yeah. if you don't have those two things, you're not going to thrive as Sarah Lawrence the best way possible. That's a that's a very interesting thing. Are they receptive to that? Do, they, do you find that draws people in? I think the people we end up coming to Sarah Lawrence, uh, they 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 really do try and draw to that. They they appreciate that and they respect that from when the did parents you know, all the way up to the players, all the entire family. Yeah, Who entire family. really you're 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 getting married to the whole family exactly. Yeah. When you first started to engage in that kind of contract, was that daunting? You were a young guy just coming up, or did you feel like, no, this is what I should be doing? I mean, what, what was that like? Well, I was one of the youngest uh, Division three head coaches in the country when I first took over the job. 25? So I was 25 when I took it yeah, over. Yeah. Um, so it, it was a daunting experience, no doubt about it. I don't know if were I- Were you married I, at the time, or were you single? I was single. Um, I think that was a blessing, truthfully, because I put, invested a lot of time. Yeah. It became my- wife work wife for you know <laughs> a couple of years and then I, then I met my now wife for we just got you know it's gonna be seven uh seven years next week so wow congratulations um, thank you yes so there are a lot of positives of being able to come into a, a new program that it, again like you we talked about this almost like a startup company yeah um starting from fresh you better and be there seven days a week around the clock aren't the sleeves rolled up the whole thing you gotta be in it yeah yeah so when you were doing that you were probably doing everything you were um were you putting together the desks? Were you setting up the travel arrangements? Were you figuring out the catering? Like you're doing everything. Uh, I was doing all, all the logistics. I was mopping the court. I was getting it ready. You know, everything. Every, every mopping day. the court. <laughs> everything. You're on the weekends. You're sewing the uniforms, <laughs> fashioning them together from <laughs> sticks and uh, the textiles or whatever. Yeah. Um, so you're doing that from a startup. It, you look at it now when you walk in your office, when you walk on the court, when you see the players and the uniforms that you design, I assume. Yeah. You had absolutely. To, I had I had input on it. Do you, what does that feel like? It's really humbling to see something kind of come to fruition. Not empowering. You don't walk around, you know. No, that's not my personality. It's humbling. It's humbling. It's uh, it's one of those things we preach in our program, entitled to nothing, grateful for everything. Entitled to nothing, grateful for everything. That's right. That's great. That's fantastic. So you, you walk in and you see all these things you built or helped build or had the a very fundamental part in building, and well, you're humbled by it. 100%. And I, I think I'm mostly I'm humbled by is that the fact that I get a chance to do that is, is really a great opportunity. What was your background? What, your, what did your parents do? So my parents, uh, I grew up in, actually, I was born and raised in a ice cream store. So my parents had ice cream stores when I was growing up. Um, my dad sold the companies when I was probably around sixth or seventh grade. And okay. then uh, he got what, in, what were the ice cream stores just so they were they were just in Pennsylvania named um, they're called Dairy Maid. Dairy Maid. Okay. Yep, Dairy Maid. And then uh, during M A D E or M A I D. Okay. Yep. M A I D. And then like a little phonetic play on words. Great. Go with it. In middle school, my dad had started a lawn care and landscaping and snow removal business. And I was right at that prime time to start working. Yeah. Uh, so I started mowing lawns, uh, doing landscaping and a much a, a much less exciting job than scooping ice cream that you could, you know, get high yes. off your supply. So you had to go shovel snow. I had to go shovel snow at two in the morning in the winter. So, yeah. Because you had to have their their uh, driveways shoveled before they left. Before they left for work. At two in the morning, you're getting up. Yes. What age were you? I was around 13, 14 years old. Is that when you learned your work ethic? 
That's my work. Uh, absolutely. My parents, 100%. They didn't get a chance to go to college, um, but they know how to work and make money and, and provide for a family. Yeah. Uh, so that was an incredible opportunity and experience for me. So your, your dad started his company when you were starting this this snow company. Snow, is it snow plowing? Or what snow plowing. Snow, yep, snow shoveling, snow plowing. So what year was that started? That had to be, I was in seventh grade, so that... 1992, 93. So the wet cement years of your life, you're you're watching your dad build something from scratch. That's right. Was that helpful or did that modeling help you walk into Sarah Lawrence and build something from scratch? Yes, I think it's not a traditional path for a lot of people. And I got a chance to see what real adversity is um, in, in some respect. And uh, the, the one thing I always try to look for, and we talked about character a little bit earlier, yeah. is I was so fortunate that my parents pushed me in the right direction to go to college. Because I could have easily still been in Pennsylvania working. You know, I, that's where I could be right now. Yep. Um, so when I go back to being humbled and being grateful, it's an incredible opportunity to be here at Seal Beach right now because I very easily could not be here. When you talk to families, you talk to kids, do you share these stories with them? Do you tell them you understand what it's like to work hard for what you're what you what you earn what you make or is that something that they you try to keep in the background like you how much of yourself i guess the, the larger question is how much of yourself and your story do you share with people I, I share more about the college trajectory from when i first went to college first person in my family go to college i, I share that are there a lot of resonance points with other families first first gen going to college every now and then and which is pretty neat and that's a connection that you can build on for sure through relationships right so why are you here today you could you could be a lot of different places why the all academic basketball Super Bowl right here. Yeah, so West Coast League and All Academic Super Bowl. This is now my tenth year being here. Yep. Um, I kind of came in when it started a small recreational gym out in Vegas. It's grown a bit. It's grown a little bit since then. Yeah. And, How many uh, people are there right now? There's probably about 300, 350 people out there right now. Maybe is it, more. Is it a, a good event? Is it helpful for it's you? it's a great event? It's one of the premier events that we come to and and I really value that because again, we can't get out here that much. So this is a great opportunity for us to see a lot of high academic kids in California. What's happening here, like at this event, just for people who don't know anything about it? Yeah, it, it's it's definitely it's a showcase event. So it's two days of you have you start out with some stations, but again, it's, a lot of it's based on team showcasing. Yeah. So the students to come are student athletes, and they really do value academics. They want to be at a high academic institution for for college. How many people from this particular event will you? year in year out year over year um uh, recruit i think it's changed and, and you know when i first started doing it and we were a very different type of recruiting we were recruiting probably 50 to 60 maybe even more initially um, i think now that we've been able to be a little bit more picky or choosy uh we're probably more around that 15 to 20 to where we'll reach out to so when you were recruiting 50 to 60 or even 50 to 60 is it the attrition rate so high is that the reason why you're and i think the People said no to Sarah Lawrence. They may not have known Sarah Lawrence for basketball recruiting yeah. in those early years. Um, so often now that Sarah Lawrence is a general name for a lot of the AU clubs and, and, and especially in the West Coast. So when you're here, uh, you're recruiting 15 to 16 people. What's how, for how many spots? Is it two spots, three spots? So the past two years after COVID, we had to bring in some bigger classes. So this year's class is kind of getting back to the basics a little bit of Three to four guys is what we're looking to bring in. Okay, um, that's a great number for us. And it, again, it does make us be a little bit more choosier. So we're looking for two bigs, one that can hopefully play right away, maybe one that we can help develop and, and be a project. And then we're looking for uh, a guy that can just shoot. We're yeah. always looking for some shooters, and then someone who's just a stud, <laughs> someone who can just score. So that could be any position. When you talk about two bigs, you mean six seven, six ten? Obviously, I, I think it really varies. Uh, right now, we have a six ten freshman. We have a six six senior who actually was a West Coast elite. Um, member f five years ago now, okay. but uh, he's uh, he's going to be one of the better bigs in our league, and he's only six six. What does West Coast Elite provide in terms of like if you play? I have a son who's eleven years old, so I ask as a podcast um, interviewer and also as a parent, like what do they what do they offer? How do they prepare the student athletes to go into college? I, I think the organization. So I think it's one step off of high school. High schools typically, you know, you might see a little bit more organized basketball and. West Coast Elite has really mimicked that. They've done a great job of hiring coaches that understand, put in systems, demand their students to play both offense and defense. And they prepare them for college. And they absolutely prepare them for college. For college. Are, in terms of other, is it, for people who don't know, what is West Coast Elite? Is it an AAU team? Is it a, what is it? I think it's developed. I think it's a, I think it's an AAU team for sure. There's, you know, there's, there's 
all throughout California. Now, there's, I don't even know how many teams there are. You probably know better than I. But I think it's also a support. So it, it, it's a organization that's going to help support you to make the best decision for you, whether it is maybe just going to college to be a student. Maybe it's to be a student athlete. Maybe it's a Division One, two, or three, NAIA, whatever it may be. They're going to support you and help you and guide you along the way. There's a lot of good resources throughout or throughout that organization. When you were coaching, what was the the toughest, the darkest moment, the toughest time you ever had? I want to say probably my first year um, that I came in, we had a full Division three schedule set up because we had to for provisional status. Uh, but I had seven players on my team, not one played high school basketball. What? So can you imagine that coming Wait, in? Say that again. I had seven players on my team my first year. I they had never recruited before. I came in, in October. They had, we had seven guys in my first practice. Not one played high school basketball. I was supposed to go play a Division three tournament three weeks away. This sounds like a Disney movie. It could be. <laughs> so what happened in those three weeks? Did you teach them how to dance? We taught they defense, defense, defense. And guys, I, I said honestly to them, if we can keep our turnovers down as much as possible and play defense, we can try to be in any game we play. And what happened? And we lost horribly the first weekend. <laughs> <laughs> a bloodbath? It was a bloodbath in both games of the tournament. Um, mm. But I will say, and I talked to these guys quite a bit because I didn't recruit them. They just came to school to go to school. Uh, I said to them right away, I said, guys, I know I have to recruit for this team to get better, and I'm sorry you're in this situation. But one thing I valued, you never gave up. They wow. kept playing the entire time. They got through an entire season. We ended up winning six or seven games my first year. What? For Believe people who had never played? Who have never played. That's incredible. It was incredible. They were a great group of guys um, and highly distinguished. I mean, one went to medical school, one yeah. is in law school. They're doing great things. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. They, I assume they still keep in contact. That's a pretty and, auspicious, interesting, non-obvious uh, a, a group of guys. That's a group of guys that really see the change. And, and they talk about it quite often when I, when I do have a chance to interact with them. They can't believe where the program has come in a short amount of time. Yeah. Does that give you some fulfillment? Or that's, you just... that's humbling, but it's also it's pretty cool to see that. So is there any part of your your life, what you've built in basketball, that makes you just want to thump your chest and run down the streets yelling how successful you are, or is it all just humility? I think a lot of it's humility right now. When we win a, a conference championship and make the NSA tournament, which is going to come soon, maybe I'll do it then. Deal. Thank you so much for joining us, Coach. It's been a lovely talk. Thank you very much. 